Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Deborah, and today I'm going to do more of Roxy's weekly challenges. I don't know if I'll get them all done, but I haven't done that many, so I'm going to do this one. And this one is making antique book page envelopes. So I'm using that as the idea, but I have a few ideas of my own to throw in. So this is a standard envelope that I've got here that I'm sure you've seen a million times, and I want to make it a little bit different. What I don't like about it is this, how we've got this deep thing here. So I thought that I would use some scrapbooking cardstock and put across here. And before I do that, I do want to put a notch in it. I'll just grab my circle. This is a smaller one, but it'll do. It'll work just the same. It'll just be a little bit smaller. So it's roughly, it's about six and a half inches. So that's about three and a quarter. We'll put it there and I'll just do a little notch as you know I don't like to do a big deep notch I think a little one works fine and then I know this piece is the same size so I'm going to do my notch here as well on this piece while I'm at it just pull that out of the way now I've marked it so it's too tiny to go through two pieces this cardstock is a craft and it's quite heavy but anyway, I've got that second one done. I don't know if I'll get to that. See how I go. So first thing is to lay this down on here. It'll give the pocket more strength. And that's also why I'm using an existing envelope rather than, you know, doing one from scratch. I've done the ones from scratch before and they do work fine. Just a different technique today, really. I thought I'd try something different. A bit of glue down and then putting this on the top of it so that it matches up up to there so the flap can still come down. The other thing I want to do is cut this flap off. So I might just fold it and just tear it off really. I don't even know if I have to tear it off, you know. I could probably fold it again and then fold it over. Is it straight? I think that bit there is straight. Let me look. That looks reasonably straight from what I'm seeing. Yep. And again, that'll give it more strength as well. So just really trying something different, I thought. So that is the base. Now, if you don't have envelopes, you don't need to do the base piece. You can just use pages. But since I had the envelopes, I thought I may as well use them. So this one here, I wish that I'd done that notch before I put this down now. I might have to rip it off afterwards. Okay, uh, I might put this on the front actually. I'm not sure if I'm going to sew them yet. I may, I may not. So I'm going to stick it down as though I'm not sewing it. This is just an old piece from one of my typewriting books, typewriter textbooks if you like. And I will tear it off because otherwise the page will be upside down, the paper. And then I've also got, trying to find something else. Um, maybe I'll just use this one again. I'm going to cover it up anyway. So I'm going to use the raggedy bit on the end. and Put this on. And then up there, I was using the raggedy bit on the end, but now I've stuck it down on the wrong spot. I guess I'll just use what I've got. And then here where I've got that notch, I'm just going to tear around that to create that notch again. And then it's just a matter of um, tearing. I'll get my ruler, put it down the edge and tear these pieces off. And then for the flap, I'm going to put another piece. This time I'm using some music paper. Just putting it up to the edge there. And I will tear it off as well. So I'll just work out where it's got to come off. Actually, I'll do the sides first. That'll make it easier, I think, than trying to do the top part first. And 
and then I will open this up like that and then I can get in here and do this piece now I will have to do something about the inside of that as well so maybe I should have put that all the way in because otherwise it's going to show there that would have been a good idea wouldn't it never mind I'll probably do this piece here now and then I'll worry about the inside I like this piece somebody's written on it it's great they've written the um, beat one two three four one two three four over and over again that's great now I put this on here it should be the right width because I just tore it off and again folding it down and flipping it and then I can tear it off here and then on the inside I need to put another piece so maybe I'm wondering if this piece will go in here actually I'm going to put a piece of this in I need something that's a bit stiffer so if I just mark this so I'm going to slip that in there and then hold it up like that and then run a bead of glue in here so that it will stick down okay and then that should then give me access to this without having seeing the white piece I'm just pulling it up to completely cover that white piece and then that still goes over now I put that on upside down the writing but you know it is what it is can't change it now that's two errors and I have inked the edge and that's also really crooked so I'll trim that off when I go to my cutter I think because that when I look at the writing I couldn't live with that I'd have to trim that off so I'll do that when I before I finish and that's created quite a good envelope nice and sturdy that envelope so we need to do some more on it though it's not enough how it is I do have some more music paper in fact I've got that bit I was going to use before maybe I can put this down like this here take advantage of that okay that's what I'll do I like the handwriting that's on it so I'll put this down I might put it up a bit in that sort of empty space that's up here there you go and I also have some I thought I had oh no I didn't bring it over I don't think I thought I had some paper from the German book that I have here but I haven't brought it over so I'll just leave that maybe I'll put a piece of this on this is more vintage chemist journal just wondering where I'm going to put that okay so I'm going to tear it so it's the 14th of July 1929 I'm going to tear that off and put it down here so again tearing through the center just guessing where that goes and then put that down on top which side will I put on this side or this side mm, I quite like that side yeah I'll put that side down so I'll put some glue on and stick it down because there's nothing that says that you can't put paper on top of paper I'm just layering things up a little bit and maybe a bit more of that music paper might look good on there too and I'll just tear another little piece now, I don't like how that tore so I'm just going to tear it again to get it more into a tapered thing from you know small to large and this has got to go up this way so this would be the right way because I don't want it on that side I want to put it on this side and that's what we'll do we'll overlap that I think it looks nicer when it's overlapped a little bit in my opinion 
Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take these postcards. So these are the ones that I bought that I don't really like and I thought I'll just use them up and um, you know maybe I'll just have to get rid of some of them because I don't really like them that much. And I will do something with them. So I'm thinking that I could use like this one here and I could just use it as like a fussy cut image. So let's see how it goes. At least it'll be using it then, won't it? So I'm just going to fussy cut around the mushroom. This is the front, so I might put that on the front of it. Okay, let's stick it down. I, I don't think I'm going to fussy cut through there. I'm going to leave the little one attached quite well to the big one. And it's also a really good size for this envelope, I think. This one I'm going to chop as well. So I'm just going to come and chop the bottom part of this one along here. Oh, that went flying. I'll cut the next one and we'll use it hopefully if it doesn't go flying off into the distance. I guess if you've got things that you don't like this is a way to use them is just to chop bits off them and use them as embellishments on other things. Now I want something on the back. I'm just not sure what though because that is a bit too tall. I was thinking to put those butterflies on there. In fact I'll chop them out and then I'll see if that's going to work. That looks all right there doesn't it? I'm much happier with them now I'm chopping them down rather than just using them in whole pieces. So get that on there. actually a good size for that as well. So this was quite a good idea in the end. Okay what else have I got that I can chop up and put on there? Now I'm hand cutting this to make it straight because I figured if I follow the line on the music sheet it should be straight. Don't know, certainly much better than it was. Yep that'll do. And then under here I might put one of these Where's a longer one? Here. Maybe in the middle, maybe on this side. Yep, I think I'll put it on that side. Actually I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to put this piece down here or here. Yeah I'll put that piece down there and then I'm going to get a short piece with the things on it. What do you call them? The markings on it. I'm going to put that maybe up here. Yep. I think that's fine. I'm quite happy with that one now. And I've got quite a sturdy little pocket there that I can pop into a junk journal and then use it as a place to put um, tags or, you know, writing or whatever else I want to put on there. So that's number one. That was so much fun. Let's do another one. And this time I'm going to put, I'll still put it down on here. I was going to put the paper down first. Actually I should put the paper down first, shouldn't I? Mm. Okay, I'll put the paper down first before I do anything else. Now I've got a piece of scrapbooking paper just happened to have it there sitting on the side. So I'm going to mark it and cut it down and pop it into the envelope. So this will be the inside. Again slip it in. If it's too big I can always cut it down. It's just firm enough. Mm, it needs a little tiny haircut. Maybe a millimetre if that. Yep much better, much easier. And then this time I'm going to fold this over and I'm going to measure and put it so that the tip meets the fold and that way it should be straight. Much better than it was last time I can tell you. <laughs> and then this piece can go here. 
So these would be something that you could make for Happy Mail. You could make, you know, half a dozen and send them off. They'd make a good Happy Mail, I think. Or you can just make a few and store them until you're ready for your next journal and put them in that. I think these would have lots of uses, actually. In fact, the envelopes that I've made like this in the past, I kind of used a lot of them. So I don't mind that I'm going to have some more that will be there ready and waiting. Now I've got this one here, which I'll put down. Just sticking the whole piece on to start with. And then tearing it off here. And then here. And then I'll go back to that notch and I'm just pushing in with my thumb and that's just come out beautifully. So that's one way of doing it. Yep, that looks fine. All right. Now, on the other side, I may put down some more of this typing exercise. So I'm going to put it in the center this time rather than on one side. And I'm just going to go for I might go for the whole thing actually. Right up the flap and everything this time, just for something different. And that goes to the top. And we'll flip it over. Got that pretty good on the top there. And then tear it off. Reasonably quick too these, I think. Once you sort of get on a roll, I'm sure they'd be even quicker. And then fold it back. I'm just lining that up a bit better while the glue's still wet. And fold it back like this. And then the ruler tear is the simplest and quickest thing. Of course, you can put that in your cutter if you want to. It's a personal preference. I find with the paper that tearing it with the ruler is much easier and then I will ink around the edges and I'm using my oxide I don't even need to get more on there because it's already quite dark and it's on there from previous and just put that around now of course if you don't like that little bit of white envelope showing there which is barely showing at all then you can ink it or as I said, you don't have to use the envelope as the base. The only reason I'm using the envelope as the base is for strength and durability. Nothing more. I may end up putting some washi tape on there. I don't know if I've got any sitting on the table actually. Normally I have a roll or two sitting here still, but I might have put them away. Okay. Now, again, paper on paper. Now I've got my word typewriter upside down, but never mind. Because that's quite bland, I need something on it. So I just wanted to do that same technique that I did before. And this time I'll explain to you what I'm doing in case you're wanting to know and interested. So first of all, I'm trying to figure out which way is up. This way is up on that paper. So what I do is I normally, and this is kind of a rule of thumb for me when I'm doing anything like this, I tear from a larger piece to a smaller piece. So I just tear it up like that so that it goes from large to small. And then I normally put the large piece on one side. So in this instance, I'm going to put it here because that's a more interesting piece of paper. And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to do the same. but. This time I want to go from the larger on here down to a, a small. So basically creating a very elongated triangle. It doesn't have to be straight on one side. It just happened that one was. And I find that this technique works best. Now, I've already got my paper um, cut ripped like that. And I'd like to come along here and rip it. But of course that will be on that side, but easily fixed because I can turn it over. So I'm just going to... Just take the paper and very gently tease it down. Some paper turn, um, tears better than others. This one's quite good for tearing actually. And then that piece is going to go on here. And also I try and overlap it like that. 
So I'll put this piece down and if you do this I think you'll find that it works pretty much every time and it's just about what your eye sees and where your eye goes to. It's nothing, I'm not doing anything that other people don't know how to do. I just thought I would explain it to you in case you didn't realize that. And then the next piece, I'm going to go the other way. So I've got this little piece. I don't know whether I'll do that, maybe. Now I think I'll go back to the music paper. Let's see what we've got here. So I've got this little piece and I'm just going to make it a little bit um, wobbly on the end if I can. If it doesn't work, which it's not really working that well, then I'm probably going to ditch it, I think. Yeah, that's not going to work. I'll take a full sheet because I want to get another little skinny long piece across here. So just try and get it as thin as I can and there you go. So I just have to work out which way's up. The treble clef's there so it goes over this way and again I'm going to bring it in this time, kind of match it up with this one. So I'm not going to go to the edge because if I put it there it just looks a bit weird. If you roll it across you just have to look and see what's going to work. Now I'm actually going to turn it around the other way as well I think. Yep that looks much better, it's more balanced. And by balanced I don't mean it's lining up, I mean when you look at this and you look at this your eye is drawn to the darkness of the music paper and this just adds a bit of interest in between. So I'm going to put this one and overlap it a little tiny bit again and just get some paper and practice if you don't you know you're not confident with tearing paper you just have to keep on practicing. So put that there and again I'm going to the edges because if you put everything in here it'll look strange. You need to do what I call break the edge which I've explained to you before. You definitely need to have your edges so that they have something going over the edge or in this case to the edge. And then I'm wondering if it needs another piece or not. Probably not because I'll put something else on, at least not on the front. I wanted to get these cards again and see what else I've got in here that I can chop out. What about those ones? Yeah, I think I'll use these ones this time. So I've chopped those out and I'm going to put them there. Make sure they don't look any good there. I need something smaller. I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to put them on maybe this side or this side. That looks better to me and I don't want to cover up the date that the page was written. Because as you know, going on almost a hundred years now. I wish I could find some more of these. They were excellent but I haven't been able to find more since I found these ones. Well not here, I did find that one journal in Lyon but it wasn't as big as what these were. I quite like that. What else have I got in here? Got some butterflies, I could cut some butterflies out couldn't I? Um, let's see, what else? Oh there's some more mushrooms. Oh that's another type of mushroom as well. I like the, um, let's turn it over. I want something for here, I might go for that mushroom actually and chop it up because that looked really good last time. And then I'll take some of those bits that I cut before because I quite like these ruler bits. Cut that off there and put one up there. Maybe I'll put that one, actually I need a longer one I think. Try and find something else to put along the bottom there, it definitely needs something. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cutter and I'm going to cut that word fungi off there. What about that one, do you like that one? Again you've got a really good pocket in the back here. I think that's all right. So that's the second one and I think that's probably enough. I think I could do more 
but I'm going to stop now and hopefully you enjoyed that. Now I do also have some butterflies and I think I can fussy cut around those and use them for something. So there you go, I'll just grab them back and show you. I've got this one and this one, put them like that so you can see them. And that is my Roxy um, weekly challenge for the envelopes. So thanks very much for joining me. This is Deborah. Cheers.